hello students good day and welcome once again to this channel in today's video we are going to continue our lesson on probability we are going to focus more on compound events now in the previous lessons we established the fact that events are subsets of a sample space therefore two or more events can be combined to form a new event and we call this new event the compound event Compound events are formed by the joining words and, or, or. And the sample space in this case is called the universal set. Now, if A and B are two events of the sample space S, then 1, A intersection B, denotes the event that A and B occur simultaneously. A intersection B denotes the event that both A and B occur at the same time. 2. A union B denotes the event that either A or B or both occur. A union B denotes the event that either A or B or both A and B occur. 3. The probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. And this is what we call the additive law of probability. Notice that in probability, the probability of A intersection B is the same as the probability of A and B. So what this primarily means is that A intersection B is the same as A and B. And then the probability of A or B is the same as the probability of A union B. Now with this information, let's solve a few questions. Now let's try the first question. The event A, which has elements 2, 4, 6 and 8, and event B, which has elements 1, 4, 5, 8 and then 9, belongs to the sample space S which has elements 1 through to 9. If a number is selected at random from the sample space, find the probability that it is from A, B, A and B, and A or B. We have elements in set A, we have elements in set B, and then we are told that the sample space has elements 1 through to 9. If a number is selected at random from the sample space, we are going to find the probability that the number is from A, the number is from B, the number is from A and B, and then the number is from A or B. So let's solve this problem together. So first of all, let's write down the number of elements in each of the sets. So the number of elements in set A, we have four elements number of elements in set B we have five elements and then the number of elements in the sample space we have nine elements so let's solve for A we are going to find the probability that the number selected from the sample space is from A so the probability of event A occurring is equal to the number of elements in event A divided by the number of elements in the sample space. Now the number of elements in A is 4. And the number of elements in the sample space is 9. So the probability that a number selected at random from the sample space is from A is 4 over 9. Now let's solve for B. We are going to find the probability that the number selected at random from the sample space is from B. So that is probability of B equals the number of elements in B divided by the number of elements in the sample space. Number of elements in B is 5. Number of elements in the sample space is 9. So the probability that event B occurs is 
5 over 9. That's very simple. Let's move on to C. So for C, we are going to find the probability that the number selected at random from the sample space is from A and B. Now A and B is the same as A intersection B. So first of all, let's find the set A intersection B. Now A intersection B means that we are going to find or write down the elements that are found in both A and B. Now from set A and B, you realize that 4 is common to both sets and then 8 is also common to both sets. So we have 4 and then 8. So that is the set of A intersection B. So the number of elements in A intersection B, we have two elements. So the probability of A intersection B is equal to the number of elements in A intersection B divided by the number of elements in S. So we have number of elements in A intersection B to be 2 divided by 9. So the probability that a number selected at random from the sample space is from A and B is 2 over 9. Now let's move on to D. So for D, we are going to find the probability that a number selected at random from the sample space is from A or B. Now from the additive law of probability, A or B, which is the same as A union B, is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. Now from A, B and C, we had the probability of A to be 4 over 9, probability of B to be 5 over 9, and then probability of A intersection B to be 2 over 9. So using this formula, the probability of A union B is equal to 4 divided by 9 plus 5 over 9 minus 2 over 9. Now because the denominators are the same, we are going to add and subtract the numerators. So 4 plus 5 is 9, 9 minus 2 is 7. So the probability of A union B is equal to 7 over 9. Now alternatively, We can try to find the set A union B. Now for set A, we have elements 2, 4, 6, and then 8. And then for set B, we have elements 1, 4, 5, 8, and then 9. So A union B becomes 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, and then 9. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 elements. So the number of elements in A union B is 7. So we say that the probability of A union B is equal to the number of elements in A union B divided by the number of elements in S. So this is equal to 7 over 9. So you can as well use this approach to find the probability of A union B. Now let's move on to the next question. So now let's solve for the second example. The 12 equal sectors of a circular board fixed to a wall are numbered 1, 2, 3, through to 12. If an arrow is thrown directly at the center of the board, 
find the probability that it hits a sector with A, an even number, B, a number divisible by 2 or 3, and then C, a number divisible by 2 and 3. So let's solve this example together. Now basically what you are describing here is you having a circular board, okay? And then the circular board we are told has 12 sectors. So we are going to divide this circular board into 12 equal parts, okay? So assuming that all the sectors are equal, let's label the sectors. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 12. So we have 12 sectors, 12 equal sectors. Now we are going to find the probability that it hits a sector with A, an even number. Okay. So first of all, let's write down the sample space for this experiment. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 12. So for A, let the event that the arrow hits an even number be A. Therefore, in set A, we have element 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. So the probability that the arrow hits an even number is equal to the number of elements in A divided by the number of elements in S. So number of elements in A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have 6 elements. So 6 divided by 12. Number of elements in S is 12. So 6 divided by 12. 6 goes into itself once into 12 two times. So the probability that event A occurs is 1 over 2. Now let's solve for B. The probability that it hits a sector with a number divisible by 2 or 3. So let A be the event that it hits a number divisible by 2. So actually, it is the same as the set of even numbers. So we have A to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then 12. And then let B be the event that it hits a number divisible by 3. So we have set B comprising of 3, 6, 9, and then 12. So let the event that it hits a number divisible by 3 be B. Now let's write down the set A union B. So a number divisible by 2 or 3 means that we are going to find the probability of A union B. So the set A union B is made up of elements 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, and then 12. 
So the number of elements in A union B is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 8 elements in A union B. So now let's find the probability of A union B. So the probability of A union B is equal to the number of elements in A union B divided by the number of elements in S. Now the number of elements in A union B is 8 divided by 12. So 4 goes into 8 2 times into 12 3 times. So the probability of A union B is equal to 2 over 3. Now let's solve for C. We are going to find the probability that it hits a sector with a number divisible by 2 and 3. So in our solution, we said that A is the event that it hits a sector with a number divisible by 2. So we have set A to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then 12. And B is the event that it hits a number divisible by 3. So we have 3, 6, 9, and then 12. Now, if we want to find the probability that it hits a number divisible by 2 and 3, first of all, let's find the set A intersection B. So we are going to write down the elements that are common to both A and B. Now, 6 is common to both A and B, as well as 12 is also common to both A and B and b so we have a intersection b to be 6 and then 12 so the number of elements in a intersection b is 2 we have two elements 6 and then 12 so the probability of a intersection b is equal to number of elements in a intersection b divided by number of elements in s so the probability of A intersection B is equal to 2 divided by 12, which is equal to 1 over 6. So the probability of A intersection B is equal to 1 over 6.